The numbers on the board were answers that were given by students when asked to rate the education system from 1 to 5. In addition, in a recent survey that I have done with 52 people, it shows that 3 was the highest rating when asked to rate the education system from 1 to 5. All of this conclude that there is something wrong with the education system. So today, I have concluded 3 different reasons why there is a problem with the Malaysian education system. There's too much emphasis placed on road learning. Based on the results that I've collected from my survey, 75% of people out of 52 people agree that there is too much emphasis on memorization in the education system. In the real world situation, road learning is not even required. Here is an interview that will show you why road learning is not important. There's nothing that we ever need to memorize anymore. Nothing. Everything that we I would ever need to memorize is in this little box that's only getting, the access to it only gets smaller and smaller. People needed to memorize things in the age of industrial revolution, manufacturing, you know, when that was the focus. People don't need, to, that's not why we should pay people and that's not what people can contribute. Mm -hmm. People need to think, people need to problem solve, people need to collaborate, come up with ideas. And if you all you're doing is memorizing something and you don't even know what it means, what a waste of space. In my experiences, I used to be a top scorer in my biology class. And then when I came into international syllabus, I failed my exams. It was at that moment of time, I truly realized that I was not understanding what I was learning, but instead memorizing the exam structure formats, lab experiment, and textbook. My critical thinking skills and understanding was not there, which was why I could not answer the questions from the international syllabus. Here is an interview to show my father's past experiences with road learning. I have a lot of uh, friends who virtually memorize all the answers to the exam questions. They would uh, study previous year exam questions and they would memorize very hard the answers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they may not understand the, the totality of the question. They just know how to answer it by the fact that they Memorize the answer. In my opinion, the education system can decrease road learning by changing up the repetitive questions every year. The solutions to answers should not be found from textbooks, and teachers should always connect real life situations to what they are teaching, which will help with the understanding of students. Here is a clip of how a teacher would deal with students who have chosen road learning as their method of learning. Is I try to ask questions so that they can't just write down the answer from the textbook. Mm -hmm. Do you ever uh, ask them to read from the textbook? No. Mm -hmm. No. Not very often. They have to... F why, why bother? They can find out. And they need to learn if it's if it's good information or bad information, if it's right or wrong. These are what they would get paid to do in a real mm -hmm. environment. So classification between stronger and weaker students is horrible. Telling students that they're not as good or as intelligent as others due to their average grades would just make them believe that they are indeed not good or as intelligent as others. There are seven different types of intelligence, and standardized testing can only prove one kind, one type of intelligence. The education system should be a should be should create a platform where all students would feel equal and have an opportunity to strive instead of putting down one's individual's own intelligence. And I didn't like it how just like all the book smart kids were always in the first like one or two classes. It would be nicer if everyone was together and that way the best way you learn is from learning from other people. So if you mix a book smart person with a person who's a lot more fit into sports, it kind of complements the two of them in a way. 
So I think that would have been a smart decision. So here is an interview showing the flaws of this system based on a teacher's personal experience. Personally, I do not feel that it is an effective method. Um, I too um, went to government school when I was younger and there was this whole situation where you place in this class and that class and things like that and I felt a lot of times that students in the so-called weaker classes remain weaker because when the teachers walked in there was this perception that these, class, these uh, students, as you say, were not interested in studying and therefore they weren't given enough um, they weren't given enough uh, time and effort by the teachers themselves because they felt that okay, these kids already know, this, you know, know how kind of kids, you know, they are interested in the studies, so why should I waste my effort when I got other students who are interested? Um, when you have pointed out to me as well that it's not the case that they're not interested in studying, it's perhaps that certain subjects are not as strong as, and sometimes perhaps that they are more physically active, like they enjoy sports, they, they enjoy drama, things like that, the subjects that perhaps not uh, provided by the syllabus. And, um, and so this makes it difficult because um, in my case I was actually more an art student but of course back then you had to take science to be anything, right? And so I, I found it very as well. And I was placed in like, I think the second or third, not because I couldn't but because my like you know my maths weren't good enough, you see? And and so this never helped me actually, right? Because then when you came other subjects will also come in, other, other teachers, other subjects will also come in and have this attitude where you want to learn. And you know, I was good in other subjects, it was just certain subjects that I wasn't good at. So there's this, this irony here, right? That it there was an argument made by my friend who said that if this system was not implemented, then the weaker students would fall back when mixed with the stronger students. So here is a clip of my interview of how my literature teacher dealt with this exact same situation. My literature teacher was suddenly given a batch from both the KBSM and the IGs. The KBSM students had no no knowledge on literature whatsoever, while the IGCSE students had, uh, had done literature before in their lower secondary. In this scenario, the KBSM students would play the weaker students while the IGCSE students would be the stronger ones as they are the ones that has experience. Yeah, when you put it like that, it does sound that of course the KBSM students should be in a special class of their own. But, uh, you know, I, I felt that that was not required. It's just a method then of spending extra time with the students who find that, okay, that you, when you start giving them work, when you start realizing, okay, that this student needs a little bit more help, and you just spend a little bit more time, you give them a bit more work, you encourage them a little bit more, and I find that they feel up generally, because if you walk in there and you act confident, of the student itself, so the child will you know, actually feel that yeah, you know, there's no intimidation. Oh, because I'm KBSM, I won't do so well. And then there's automatically there's this barrier here, and then they won't do so well. But walking there, you say we treat everybody equally, right? Um, I find that students generally can perform, and so that's when we pull out the students and then just give them a bit more time, a bit more work, you know, things like that. The solution that I would suggest is to first get rid of this classification system. Secondly, like what my teacher has previously said, teachers should, able, should be able to identify weaker students and pay more attention to them. I myself learn better when I listen to other people's opinion. So by segregating students, you are just limiting the amount of responses that students can learn from. This is the reason why teachers always encourage students to give opinions instead of regarding them as useless because giving opinions are how students learn best. This is a more personal opinion and conclusion based on my past experiences and survey answers. In my survey, 44.2% say that teachers in government schools are not qualified enough. And so I did an interview with a principal because I knew he taught both the IGCSE syllabus and the KBSM syllabus. I asked if he required any extra training when he was doing his IGCSEs when he was teaching his IGCSE syllabus because he was previously teaching the Malaysian syllabus and he said he didn't require any extra training.
Based on this, I can conclude that it's not that the Malaysian teachers are not intelligent or certified enough, but it's just their attitude and dedication is not there. So here's a clip of an interview showing my argument. So some people feel that the reason why there are so many uncertified teachers in Malaysia is because the job field isn't competitive enough. For example, if you were lacking as a lawyer, they could easily fire you. But in the government, as a government teacher, even if you are lacking, you can't just get fired because you're fired. This is a problem in, I think, most government sectors, not just the education sector, because um, they can't really fire you, right? So you feel like, you know, I, I just need to do what I have to do, and you don't have the sense that, that, that drive for improvement. There's no motivation. There's no motivation, right? And yes, you're right, there's no competitive, uh, competitiveness to become a teacher because, yeah. like you said, you're not respected, right? It's looked down like a lowly sort of job. In my opinion, teachers here are not paid enough and the job field as a teacher is not respected enough in Malaysia for people to find it a desirable job, which is why the teaching field is not com competitive at all. Therefore, the drive or passion in teachers is not there. This is a clip of a solution provided by a principal. They need a lot of incentives and uh, perspective. The mind perspective must be changed. Many years back, Finland's education system was said to be on par with the Malaysian education system. They too had problems like classification between stronger and weaker students, problems with dedication in their teachers, and they focus and emphasize way too much on road learning. But look at them now after eradicating all of these problems. To end my documentary, I would like to quote from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Therefore, as a citizen, I want to see a change in the Malaysian education system and I know it's not impossible. <laughs>